Good Good Friday to you. Uh, today is Good Friday. Uh, it is day 39 of Lent. Tomorrow is day 40, and then Lent is over. And then after that is Easter. So I hope that uh, this weekend is amazing for you. I hope you keep in mind uh, throughout the day at least uh, what Jesus did for us. I do apologize. Yesterday I forgot to bring up that it was Maundy Thursday. I don't know what Maundy Thursday is, but it has something to do with Lent. And uh, I know that it's something to do in the, in the week and the things leading up to Christ's crucifixion. I'm going to assume it has to do with uh, the Last Supper and, and the night before. Uh, but I don't know. And I didn't do my due diligence on that, so I apologize. Maybe next year if I do this again... Uh, I'll, I'll try to get all those key dates keyed in, and that way I know exactly what I should be doing on those days. Uh, but, still good. God is awesome. And it is Good Friday, so let's celebrate, or let's observe, at least, uh, what God did for us. Today's devotion is from From the Grave. It is... Uh, a book that they pulled together from all of A.W. Tozer's writings. This one actually comes from The Attributes of God uh, by A.W. Tozer. And this little section that they got uh, for us today is appropriately called The Passion of Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 the word passion now means sex lust, but back in the early days it meant deep, terrible suffering. That is why they call Good Friday Passion Tide, and we talk about the passion of Christ. It is the suffering Jesus did as he made his priestly offering with his own blood for us. Jesus Christ is God, and all I've said about God describes Christ. He is unitary. He has taken on himself the nature of man, but God the eternal word, who was before man and who created man, is a unitary being, and there is no dividing of his substance. And so that the whole and so that Holy One suffered, and his suffering in his own blood for us was three things. It was infinite, almighty, and perfect. Infinite means without bound and without limit, shoreless bottomless, topless, forever and ever, without any possible measure or limitation. And so the suffering of Jesus and the atonement he made on that cross under that darkening sky was infinite in its power. It was not only infinite, but almighty. It's possible for good men to almost do something or to almost be something. That is the fix people get in because they are people because they are people, but Almighty God is never almost anything. God is always exactly what He is. He is the Almighty One. Isaac Watts said about His dying on the cross, God, the Almighty Maker, died for man, the creature's sin. And when God, the Almighty Maker, died, all the power there is was in that atonement. You never can overstate the efficaciousness of the atonement. You never can exaggerate the power of the cross. And God is not only infinite and almighty, but perfect. The atonement in Jesus Christ's blood is perfect. There isn't anything that can be added to it. It is spotless, impeccable, flawless. It is perfect as God is perfect. So Anselm's question, How dost thou spare the wicked if thou art just? is answered from the effect of Christ's passion. That holy suffering there on the cross and that resurrection from the dead cancels our sins and abrogates our sentence. Where and how did we get that sentence? We got it by the application of justice to a moral situation. No matter how nice and refined and lovely you think you are, you are a moral situation. You have been, you still are, you will be, and when God confronted you, God's justice confronted a moral situation and found you unequal, found inequity, found iniquity. Because he found iniquity there, God sentenced you to die. Everybody has been or is under the sentence of death. 
I wonder how people can be so jolly under the sentence of death. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Ezekiel 18.20 When justice confronts a moral situation in a man, woman, young person, or anybody morally responsible, then either it justifies or condemns that person. That's how we got that sentence. But oh, the mystery and wonder of the atonement. The soul that avails itself on that atonement, that throws itself out on that atonement. The moral situation has changed. God has not changed. Jesus Christ did not die to change God. Jesus Christ died to change a moral situation. When God's justice confronts an unprotected sinner, that justice sentences him to die. And all of God con concurs in the sentence. But when Christ, who is God, went onto the tree and died there in infinite agony, in a plethora of suffering, this great God suffered more than they suffer in hell. He suffered all that they could suffer in hell. He suffered with the agony of God. For everything that God does, he does with all that he is. It, that he is. When God suffered for you, my friend, God suffered to change your moral situation. Praise God that our moral situation has been changed because it was not a good situation for me. So uh, let's pr pray uh, and thank God for what he's done for us and uh, we'll continue celebrating this season. Lord, we praise you and we thank you, Lord God, for taking care of our moral situation, Father. You didn't have to. You could have left us. You could have said, okay, uh, go your own way and do what you want to do and, and you've been judged, but you made a way for us. You didn't you didn't just throw us away. You came up with a plan and you executed it. And it cost you everything. Thank you. Thank you for your suffering on the cross. Thank you for that passion that you had for us, Jesus. Father, Spirit, thank you for everything that you have done to this sinner uh, and changed and changing our moral situation. Praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy it. Uh, I will see you tomorrow, for those of you who are tuning in. Uh, and we will have one more devotion. Thank you.